The federal budget really is an embodiment of our nation's values and priorities. It's more than just a ledger full of numbers sitting in some office in Washington, D.C. Um, it really does indicate where we want to put our collective resources. Um, so in our plan, we do three things. We're just coming out of the biggest recession since the Great Depression, and we know that our number one priority is creating jobs. Um, the second thing is we know we have uh, a deficit of investments in this country. We need to invest in our infrastructure, in our schools, in science and technology. And so our plan really does build investments. And the third thing is we recognize that we do have a long-term fiscal challenge. We have revenue that is down because of the recession. We have revenue that is down because of Bush-era tax changes. And so our plan does reverse some of the, t the tax changes that got us into this problem in the first place. The Economic Policy Institute proposal invests significantly in areas that promote economic growth and prosperity. Investments such as education, infrastructure, and basic research have all been shown to have high rates of return and should be expanded. We believe these kinds of investments would boost our human and physical capital and promote robust long-run economic growth. Our budget finances $2.5 trillion in front-loaded but sustained investment over the next decade. This funding is designed to create badly needed jobs in the short run while also sustaining longer-term investments in our nation's economic future. Our healthcare solutions don't shift costs uh, off of the federal government onto the poor, the elderly, or the disadvantaged. What they do is they improve access, they lower costs over the long run, they make the needed investments to, so we can have better access, better quality care, and more affordable health care over the long run. EPI's proposal includes establishing a public option to complement recently enacted health care reform, allowing public programs to negotiate pharmaceutical prices, and investing in areas such as health information technology and cost-saving research. Together, these policies will lower cost growth while at the same time improving care and expanding access. So any serious effort to reduce the deficit should really take into account spending by the Department of Defense. Now, we rely on the recommendations of a bipartisan group of defense experts who suggested that cuts in the range of $960 billion over a decade would be appropriate. They achieve these savings through things like uh, force reduction to bring the military more in line with modern strategic considerations and reducing unwanted weapon systems. These level of cuts seem appropriate in the current economic environment. Millions of elderly Americans rely on Social Security for their basic retirement. Our plan recognizes the need to shore up Social Security and does so without endangering the retirement security of current or future retirees. To increase the financial stability of the system, we propose raising the cap on earnings that are subject to the payroll tax. This change would only impact the top 6% of earners who effectively pay a substantially lower rate than middle-class families. This change would solidify the funding base for Social Security for decades to come. Our plan recognizes that revenue must be part of a rational, serious solution to long-term deficit reduction. Over the last decade, trillions of dollars have been borrowed to finance tax cuts for the rich, starving our nation of badly needed funding for programs that would benefit all its citizens. Our country's infrastructure and schools have been underfunded and we are falling behind globally in our commitment to research and innovation. We cannot continue to run our nation on the cheap. EPI's plan reverses the Bush-era tax cuts for upper-income earners and adds a surcharge for millionaires. We would eliminate the preferential treatment of capital income. We would address climate change through carbon limits, which would also yield additional revenue to fund alternative energy and green jobs. We would provide a climate dividend to most families by recycling half of the saved revenue. Our plan eliminates corporate tax breaks for oil and gas companies and institutes a modest fee on financial speculation. We would limit tax breaks that disproportionately benefit high-income earners and expand key tax incentives for charitable giving and housing to low-income households. We would increase work incentives and lower taxes for low- and moderate-income workers by expanding the Earned Income Tax Credit and by extending 
the Making Work Pay credit. We support all of this in the context of an overall modernization of the tax code. EPI's plan increases overall revenue while protecting low and moderate income taxpayers. People will suggest that as a nation we can't invest, and that government spending can't accomplish uh, these national goals. And I think our plan comes from a different place. Our plan recognizes that we as a nation can invest in our economy, in our people, in our infrastructure, and that if we do this, we will have a stronger economy over the long run, and that'll help us solve our long run deficit problems, not hurt it. Together, we can invest in an economic future that works for all.